Hi, and welcome to our Intelligent Vehicle Podcast. I'm Gary Rubin. Joining me to discuss technology and connected cars are two very skilled researchers in the automotive space at Intel Labs, Tim Plowman and Jing Gang Guo. Welcome to you both. Let's get started. Here's the first question. When you're meeting with academics and OEMs, what is the direction of the thinking today with technology and intelligent cars? Just a high overview of what's the direction of the thinking? Well, I mean, there's a lot, and Shingon can speak to this too, but there's a lot. I mean, there's, there are many pain points for the OEMs right now in terms of, you know, how they're thinking about this space. So they, they're dealing with very long product cycles, you know, compared to extremely short consumer electronic product cycles. They're concerned about being edged out of that space entirely by the advanced carried in technology that pretty much everyone owns and brings into cars these days. They're also facing fragmentation in terms of their traditional supply chain with respect to OEMs and tier ones, sort of being responsible for the uh, ultimate design and integration of in-vehicle information or infotainment systems into the vehicle. So they're, in a way, my perspective is that the OEMs are struggling to sort of find a foothold in the sort of technology tsunami that's sort of swamping most aspects of our lives. So there is a, we're in the midst of an IT revolution in the automotive space and the transportation space, but it's, it's kind of early days. And there's lots of things from, you know, everything from standards and protocols down to regulatory guidelines that have to be followed in terms of implementation regarding driver distraction. There's, there's a lot happening in this space right now. And I think, in my perspective, is that, you know, the OEMs are kind of, they're trying lots of different things. They're coming to people like or companies like Intel to help them sort of navigate the infusion of technology uh, into the transportation space and also how to deal with things like the drop in the importance of you know, purchase of a vehicle among sort of key demographics, right? The millennial um, generation rates connectivity as a much more desirable asset than a vehicle. And 20 years ago, that was obviously a very different thing. So they're under quite a bit of stress in terms of how to deal with technology in the space. And I think, you know, Intel certainly provides a, a reliable and knowledgeable partner as they, you know, sort of undertake to navigate this space. What are some things that automakers should be doing and thinking about so they don't become obsolete in this landscape? What, what, uh, what's your advice? Shingon, so, you want to take a look, stab at that? Yeah, I'll, I'll take on those. I'll give you three examples and to show what, what you need to do differently. Differently. One is more positive, one is more from the urgency point of view. I think what caused kind of a big change in automotive, one of the things is the advance in, uh, uh, in, the, in the mobile mobile space. Right? Just to give you one example, you know, people seem to mm-hmm. say, hey, a lot of the safety kind of uh, rated ha- hazard is because people want to use a uh, mobile device. And the car definitely wants to be able to provide or to match some of the services so the people then the driver doesn't have to use them before. However, think of today's process. If the car maker basically says, here's my requirement for my 2017 model year, right? They put a requirement. They say what kind of application, what kind of ability. But when they, at the time they release the vehicle, the vehicle hit the market uh, three years later. In that time frame, Google has probably released six generations of Android OS. By the time you're doing your planning today, when your vehicle reached the market, you're not only late, you're again is falling behind mobile phone by six generations. So something that, that the OEM had to do is if mobile phone, if the smart the mobile industry is driving a big part of the requirement, they have to find a way to somehow match the agility. One of the things is, you know, they have to be able to somehow separate the hardware life cycle the management from the software innovation. So the software and hardware have to have different cadence. You can now say, I'm going to look and load on hardware and software together now, and hopefully three years later, even though my hardware is still quite capable by my software, there's no way for the software to, to stay fresh that way. So, so the industry has to learn a way to manage the software complexity. On the other hand, the positive side is, you know, the technology really comes in cycle. And I would say right now it's the golden age of computer vision. But at this stage, computer vision, because of the algorithm, because of computing capability brought to the market by Intel or Intel-like companies, 
you can do a lot of very practical things. The embedded box can tell it pedestrian, can tell the curvature of the road, can tell you how to drive, how to drive safely. However, like Tim said, there's a lot of regulation. And then I think over here is automotive industry cannot always wait for the government to tell them what to do, what not to do. I think the industry should have a self, you know, interest in forming alliance and industry should keep pushing the, uh, the envelope, right? Keep pushing the technology envelope and, and the let market, let consumer to, to decide and choose and don't always wait for the government to, to tell them. <laughs> Thank you, Tim and Jing Gong, for being with us today.